yet. Absolutely. You need a break for tenure, Tyler? You need to use the restroom in it? I'm good. You're pretty easy, man. There you go, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Alrighty. You want to shut the door if you don't mind? Is that alright, Tyler? Not at all. Thanks. I just don't want anybody walking by. Yeah. He's dropping the conversation. Alright, Tyler, again, my name is Dave. This is Brent. I'm Brent. Thanks for waiting on us. We appreciate that. No problem. We're going to go through this slow. It's obviously a big deal. You know, somebody got killed. Um, I don't know if you're aware, but uh, somebody else died in the parking lot after uh, after the shooting at some point. Were you aware of that? I heard about the heart attack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where'd you hear about it? My wife. Okay. News? Watching on the news, probably? Okay. Uh, her mom did. She told my wife, and all right. she told me. That's probably the most tragic of the situation. The other guy kind of deserved it, so yeah, not kidding. Um, let me start out just getting some some uh, more specific details. So your first name is technically Ronald. Ronald Tyler Ritchie. It's R I T C H I E. What's your address, Tyler? Road. What's uh what's your uh cell phone number? Nine three seven. Mm -hmm. Do you have a home phone also? I do not. Okay. And what's your date of birth, buddy? Three twenty nine nineteen ninety. What's your social security number? You tell me where you worked before, but can you tell me again? What do you do there? Roofer. How long have you been there? Three months. You uh, experienced roofer before that, before you got that job? Residential. I've never done commercial grade. Till now? Till now. Yeah. I can't say that anymore. Yeah. Don't recommend it. It hurts. <laughs> That's a tough job, man. <laughs> you don't like it when it turns 90 out, right? The 90 is not a problem. It was when it was 110. When was it 110? That's That's about the roof, you mean? The yeah. The on the roof, yeah. Well, the temperature on the roof is 30 degrees higher than it is on the ground. Yeah, I was talking out in the. Uh, it's been it's been re relatively cool for summer until the last couple of days. Yeah, the couple uh, about a couple weeks back where it hit like 98. Yeah, that was brutal. I bet. I bet. But Tyler, you said you're married. Yeah. What's your wife's name? April. She have a cell phone number. Yep. Give it to me. Nine three seven. How long have you been married, bud? Since 2012. Going well so far? Uh, up and down. Marriage. <laughs> Marriage, all right. <laughs> Marriage overall. All right. They uh, take me back. So the we know you're on the phone at Walmart. We're going to show you the video here pretty quick so you can talk us through it. But this um, go to this morning. With the PD gave you a call. They came to your the, your house today. Mm -hmm. Police department. Which one did they do? They showed up or they called? They you? called both. They, they okay. did both. They called me three times with my phone. Okay. When I'm sleeping, is off. Yeah. So I hear a rap on my door. Yeah. Okay. I looked outside. It's police. I'm like, okay, I know you're here. Got you here about 10 in the morning, you said? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think what we'll do is, before we start the videos, um, start with me yesterday. And how'd you end up at Walmart? Just wanted to walk around. Okay. Not how far is how far is Riverside from Beaver Creek? Five minutes. Okay. So this is the Walmart you shop in? Yeah. You shop and mm -hmm. you shop in there regularly? Okay. About twice a week. Um what time did you end up in the store yesterday approximately? Oh good lord. Eight thirty ish. Okay. No, about eight. About eight PM. Because I called Riverside Beauty about eight twenty. Okay. Get, um, did you work yesterday? I did. Okay, work until what time? 3. Okay, 3 p.m., and then what you do after that? Sat at home, waited for the wife to get off at 5. She got off, she had to go to her bank, came back home, picked me up, went to eat, and then walked around Walmart. Okay, did you go together? Yeah. Okay, just you two? Mm-hmm. Right about 8 p.m.? Mm-hmm. 
All right, so you show up in Walmart. What happens then? Walked around, got to the back of the tool side where I was first originally called. Uh, my wife said, there's a guy, I had my back face until the first. She said, there's a guy with a gun. So I, I turn around and look, and he's just carrying this, what looks like to be an AR of some sort, and he's walking down to the pet side. Um, before I, before you go on, are you, do you have military experience? Yes, I do. Okay. What, what was that? Marine Corps. All right. When were you in the Marines, bud? 2008, 2009. What was your rank there? E3. Okay. Why'd you leave? Medical discharge. Good enough. So you're somewhat familiar with firearms? Absolutely. Okay. Okay, you're in the tool section of Walmart. Your wife sees somebody looks like he's carrying a gun. Mm -hmm. Okay. I turn around and looked at him. It is for sure that he has a gun in his hand. He's just sitting here like broad daylight. Mm -hmm. So I immediately get on the phone with 911. Getting officers there. Okay. He, he's where when you see him? Which section? Um, he just passed us. We're in the tool section. And there's just that long strip right there, right to uh, pet. This is the back of Walmart here. This is the pet section right here. Okay. So tool section. Take that all the way down to the other end of the store. Okay, so it's just one long aisle. Yeah. Okay. How far away do you think you were when you saw this guy? Approximately 50 yards. 50 yards? So 150 feet? Yeah. When I originally saw him, he was right next to us. And then I started calling him, and he stopped right over here. Okay, so he was he was in near the tool section when he had the firearm? Yeah, I think he was trying to go to the tool section, but we were there. Okay. So he just kind of okay. turned it. But he had, the, he had the gun. He wasn't taking it out of packaging. He didn't, like, no, pull out his just, shirt. He was carrying it. It was carrying, like, just carrying it. Like, like, show me how, show me how, like, demonstrate, like, how he had it. Dangling from his, from his arm, he had it up on his shoulder. It kind of varied throughout the entire thing, but when I first saw him, he just had it, okay, out. I mean, it wouldn't say, like, it was a two-hand carry, it was a one-hand carry. Okay. Up or down to the side? Down. Down, okay. And you thought it looked like an AR-15. Mm -hmm. Did you say that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Black weapon? Black weapon, 30-round magazine, what it appeared to be. You're familiar with AR-15s? I have three of them. Personal? Yep. I won't ask you why you need three right now. Um, Long range, close quarters, and <laughs> have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna circle back after you tell us the whole story and ask you some more specific questions. But I think right now, um, talk talk me through it first. Um, the rest of what occurred, and then um, we'll just have a look at it here. On the phone with 911 after that, mm -hmm. he walked to pets, he's just walking back and forth, he can see he's not looking at anything, and I hear what, what I can recall is like loading, just clicking, 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 and then what looks like he cocked the weapon. So at this point it's getting a little serious, and he's just pointing it back and forth, just strolling it. At one point, there's a family that goes across with two young children, I'd say probably five years old, mm -hmm. and he muzzle checked both of them. Okay. That kind of concerned me right there. Mm -hmm. So, okay. At that point, she's dispatcher's just asking, "What's going on? What's he wearing? What's the gun look like? Yeah. Um, where's he at? Where's he doing? Mm -hmm. Just trying to answer your questions as quickly and as efficiently as I can. Mm -hmm. Where you at when uh, you're making the call? Where are you hiding at? Um, we actually moved up closer to him, which is, I know, kind of retarded, but we moved probably halfway up the aisle. So You're still in this aisle? Still in the aisle, yeah. Okay. And we moved up halfway. We're in the toy section. And we're just kind of on the end cap there, just hiding behind the end cap on the phone. I had my wife actually pull into the aisle because she's riding the scooter because she's got a broken ankle. Okay. So, at least I'm keeping her safe. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm not really so worried about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we're there, and it seemed like forever. Finally, police officer showed up. I could hear him outside. I heard him pull up, and I guess there's one formation, and they came in. All right. Told him, put it down, put it down. It looked like he 
checked them, and that's when two shots were fired. Okay. He dropped, and we stayed there for a minute. Um, one of the officers ran out this way here, saying we can't find him. And the other officer's like, he's down, he's right here. Mm-hmm. At that point, officers are telling us to get the hell out, get the hell out. Yeah. So we just booked it. Okay. When you first encountered him, you said you were close. You said... Uh, Probably about me to you. Okay. So he's. you walked up on him, he walked up he on walked you? He walked up on us. Okay. I was just looking at tools. Okay. He didn't encounter you, though? And no. He didn't say anything? He looked at us and walked the other way. Okay. Well, you clearly saw the gun right there. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very clear. And you didn't make any defensive maneuvers or anything? You just kind of froze and let him go on his way, and then you called 911? Mm-hmm. Okay. I didn't have mine at the time. Uh, Tyler, we uh, there's a report that uh, somebody said that he may have pulled the gun out of the toy section and took it out of packaging or something to that extent. And it might have been a Okay, that's nothing. Nothing that never came from you. No. Okay. From what I saw was he had the gun open at the whole time. Yeah. Um, I didn't see an orange tip on it or anything like that, so I do. I didn't look like it was fake. Yeah. And I wasn't going to take the risk that it was fake to right. confront him about it. Yeah. And right, right now, for all intents and purposes, you're still you're under the belief it was a real gun. Yeah. Okay. And whether it was or not, it's not my issue. Right on. I hear you. You're dumb enough to point at any kind of weapon at a police officer. You get what's coming to you. I mean, I'm like I said, I'm military as well. I'd have done the same action the police officer done. Do you have a concealed carry? So. Not yet. Okay. Brent's taking more detailed notes than me, but I'm trying to cut down a couple of things that are that are key. Um, is there so your wife remained in the aisle with you during that time? She's down the side aisle. Okay. Did you not tell her to get out the store or anything? Okay. You can tell her all you want, she's not going to. <laughs> Pip enough. <laughs> you um, mentioned that uh, a couple of kids came up on him and he, and he muzzle checked them. Did you, was that the only time that he, he seemed to encounter anybody else? Was there anybody else that you saw that engaged him or had contact with him? It didn't look as if he was pointing it at him. It just kind of, okay. where he's swinging around yeah. and flashing the muzzle toward the children. Okay. But I know accidental discharge can go. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm so, okay. yeah. And especially how he's holding, he's holding by the trigger grip, so. Okay. Pretty I much. Take a chance. Was he holding by that the whole time? Yeah. Did he look to be doing anything else while you were uh, encountering him? Or he was anything? on the phone with somebody, laughing and just, I don't know what was going on there. Okay. Like I said, I wasn't trying to get too close. Yeah. On the phone the entire time, it seemed? Yeah. Okay. So phone in one hand, gun, gun in the other. Hand, gun in the other. Okay. Now, there's a couple points where he's just holding it straight up. And the fire it back and forth. Okay. And you're on the phone with 911 the entire time. Mm-hmm. And she's trying to talk to me as I'm running up the store and everything. Trying to keep you online, huh? Keep that information. I'm like, Lordy, come on. <laughs> yeah. Well, you said you um, thought he was loading the gun. You said you, it sounded like he was loading the gun. It sounded like clicking. Did, did it look and like he was? Did you, could you see him and you putting the sound together with visual or you just thought it heard like he was he was loading it it sounded like he was like okay. running, but there was like he was messing with it and it was just kept clicking okay and like the sound to me like loading rounds in the magazine but I didn't actually see him take out a magazine or anything like that but I did see him actually cock the weapon at one point okay where was he when he cocked the weapon right there in the pedophile okay um there's other people in the aisle right here, but this is the pets aisle. Yeah. Can you, can you point to me where he was most, uh, where, where did, where? Right close to where that lady's sitting right there. Okay. So near the back and the back corner mm-hmm. there? Mm-hmm. And then from the time, so you're saying he walked up from this direction, mm-hmm. down this aisle. So he's walking up to there. And he stops. He stops right in that vicinity. And so during the time you're on the phone with, with dispatch, um, how much more movement is he making? 
mean, is he going anywhere else? I mean, he's just walking probably a two foot span back and forth. Just right, right around here? Trying to make sure, like, he's just on the phone, yeah. holding the weapon. I'm like, I don't know what he's trying to do. And he, you can hear in the, uh, the 911 call, I'm like, I don't know what he's doing. Okay. And he's so just walking back and forth. and So you you don't recall, he's not going through aisle to aisle, he's just staying right in the little vicinity right, right. there. Okay. We'll take a look, see if we, see if we can point anything else out to us as we go. Yep. Yeah. See if we can figure this out. We had some tough times getting this going here. So this is the window, that's fine. This is 1516. Can you see that okay? Is it glare on it? Yeah. Angle, yeah, angle it's more important, it's more important <laughs> for you to see than me right now. I'm going to do this too. I don't know why that's up, but I'm putting it down. Have you ever seen this guy before? Before no. tonight? No, no, no. Did he look like he was with anybody? I don't know. We got outside and there was a woman that was trying to find her boyfriend. But during the time you were in the store and on the phone, he, no. he encountered Just by you. himself. Okay. It was weird though, because she said the exact description he had. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, he's probably dead now. That's it. to this aisle right now. Yeah, I believe from our viewing of it, we're about 15 seconds away from him coming up. Right. I mean, he wasn't walking fast. He was just mm -hmm. kind of meandering, it looked like. Okay. Captain told me 2026 20, was the uh, there's 21 according to Walmart clock. You're on the phone with 911 before he even makes it down here? Mm -hmm. There he is right there. Yeah. Up on his left shoulder there. He's just waving it back and forth. He does this for a while. Okay. And he'll wave it back and forth. He'll bring it up just like this. And You're on the phone 911 right now, though, correct? Absolutely. Okay. You taking any cover whatsoever? Um, right now I'm behind an in-cap. Just like one of these things right here. Yeah, I followed it. I'm on the end. Yep. Well, smart to at least angle it off a little bit. Yeah. I tried to put something between me and him. Yeah. Whether it stopped anything, it was a different story, but... We you able to hear any of this conversation? No. I was... I had my wife chatting in one ear and... operator in the other. Even before you called, though? You couldn't hear anything? Um, before I called, um, I heard just him talking. I didn't make out anything that he was saying because I really wasn't paying attention to him. Got it. 
I was yeah. more worried about me, and my wife, and Did you smell anything on alcohol, marijuana, mm -hmm. no. maybe not close enough to, but right. you, you didn't smell anything. Any idea what he's pointed there? I have no idea. I mean, he's just pointing back and forth. He does it a couple times, like yeah. I said. Yeah. And I don't know if this camera will actually show the family that I was talking about because they come through the main aisle here okay. with their two children. So she walks right past, doesn't even look, doesn't care, nothing. Do you remember that? Yeah. That was the second one. Because the first one was back in tools, and they just walked well, by. He was walking this yeah. way, walked past, didn't. He looked yeah. at him, was like, okay, whatever, walked in the background. Yeah. Take the Walmart fashion right there for you. <laughs> Tough to see if he saw anything, but uh, yeah, he did walk right by there. So there again, he just picked it all the way up, mm -hmm. pointing it again. Remember anything any different than what you're seeing right here? Mm -hmm. The whole time I have him in view. Yeah. So when I'm on the phone with 911, I'm telling him exactly what he's doing, what he's wearing. Mm -hmm. So the description of the weapon. Swinging it, picking it up. Mm -hmm. And when you thought he was loading it, that was a little bit. Uh, where, where was he? Still in the same area, or was it earlier on? He was still in the same area. Okay. Like I said, it just sounded like it. I don't know if he actually was or not, but I know at one point he looks like he cocked it. Yeah. You were describing what you saw and heard. Mm-hmm. I mean, I just found it really strange that he's just standing in the middle of an aisle, or the end of an aisle, with a weapon on the phone. I'm like, I don't know if there's something bigger happening here that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. If he's trying to rally with other people. Yeah. It's hard telling. Like I said, I didn't stick around long after to find out what was going on. Right. Another person just flipped right out. There's the two children right there. Okay, now those are the two children that so, so we got a couple more here. So a couple down the aisle, and he's just sitting there. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they're like not noticing that he's actually carrying. It looks like he's holding it down to his side right now, out of view. I'm pausing it for a second. So we so pretty quick. We had a male and two kids walk by, mm -hmm. and then after that, this female and her two kids show up. Right. Which two kids were you referring to when you said that you thought you muzzle checked them? The first set. Okay. So, I mean, it was just like a wave around, but even still. Yeah, yeah. Quick, quick enough, you look like that's what he's, what he's doing, and they move mm -hmm. on quickly. Right. Okay. So when you see this family, what are you thinking? I'm thinking, I don't know how they're not seeing what's going on here. Okay. All right. And you have your two children right here, and this guy's got a gun. I don't know what kind of gun it is, but yeah. Yeah. I know that was my family. I wouldn't stick around that close, especially with two children. Yeah. Now she's probably not seeing what you that you don't expect to see a guy holding up, you know, uh, right? One down there. I mean, he's just looking like he's holding it down to the side, and as soon as they turn their back, he's waving it again. Did it look to you like they saw uh, that they ever even noticed that he held, held the gun? I don't think they did, okay. just because of where they were holding it, where yeah. he was holding it. Yeah. That I don't think they saw it. Okay. Coming pretty quick on here on the on the end. all that. Mm -hmm. 
the lack of a better word. What's that? I didn't see the. What's that, that look like? It's on the ground right there. That's the rifle. Okay. But I didn't see that at the time because okay. the officer is blocking the view. Yeah. That that tree's been shot. Now see see if you remember this part. Yeah. So you remember him getting back up? That's him getting back up. I didn't see him get back up. After that point, yeah. no, I didn't. I thought there was another officer coming. Actually, I well, thought he was still down. Yeah, that's what's uh, that's what it would appear at first. But then watch him, and then back. And then, I mean, I know at this point he's not shot again. He was just shot twice. Okay. Yeah. So you're not even in your mind. They tell him put it down, put it down. He doesn't do it right away. They. Fire two quick shots, mm -hmm. no more, nothing. So even beyond that, you don't even recall that he, and, and this is not a memory test, brother. I mean, Oh, you're, you're fine at this point. It's like, I'm getting already out of here. Because yeah. we're being yelled at by associates and other officers telling us to get out. So our associates telling you what to do. Absolutely. Okay. So we're still here. Let me forward it a little bit. Coming up on it. Yeah, I never knew he got back up. And I heard they uh, blew his elbow out and liver shot. You know more than me right now, or more than I can I, tell you. But we, uh, I've been eavesdropping. <laughs> Surfing though, right? You, you get those <laughs> reconnaissance tactics, huh? He said they hit him from the side and went through liver and kidneys, which is why he bled out. just happened so quick where they shot him and everything. Okay, so watch again. So he's down, comes back for him. And that's not a good idea. And you don't recall any other shots being fired at all. You heard the two, and that was right the primary two shots. Right. You don't even recall him getting back up, but you, you definitely don't believe they shot again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Did they? Um, we've, all I can go by is you know more than me right now at this okay, point. Okay. Um, there's not much I can tell you on it, but I can tell you you get a pretty pretty good accurate accounting of events. Um, would you now that you've seen that again with him coming back around? Um, what did it look like he was doing to you when he's coming back? Kind of looked like he was going to go for the officer there, or did that go for the back for the gun, or well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean did. did did it look, you don't recall him? You don't recall him getting up and raising his hands or saying I give up or don't shoot or anything like that. Nothing. You don't recall nothing means nothing. nothing. Okay. Yeah, it did kind of look like he's running right back towards the officer, didn't it? I see what the officer said. It looks like he's running though. You don't feel as bad now, do you? No. Because <laughs> I thought he was still laying on the ground. I'm like, no, he's sitting right there. One more time. So he's down, another officer's looking, he gets back up, he's running right towards him. And then down. Mm -hmm. Okay. By that time you were pretty quick on your way out? Yeah, I was. Okay. And uh, you were, it, did an officer directly encounter you to say get out? Did you just hear people yelling in general to get out? There was a couple officers. Saw you? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because my wife's trying to run with a broken ankle. She's already on the scooter. So she got up and started running. Yeah. I'm like, why are you running? You have a broken ankle. You can hear me out on the phone, too. Okay. I'm pretty sure of it. Yeah. Yeah. And she's like, I don't care right now. So we're just looking out. Okay. The officer by the first door told us to get out, get out, get out. Yeah. Um, second door, there was another officer there directing us all out. Okay. Did anybody, um, you left it with 911 how? Did they say, I'll call you back? Did they, they said, we'll let you go from here. Okay. You gave them the, all your, you gave your name? Yeah. Phone number? Yeah, I gave them okay. when I was still on the phone before all this happened. All right, you hit the parking lot at Walmart. What do you do next? Uh, I set up the car and You're tried out. to watch what was going on, see yeah. if they brought them out or yeah. who else was going in, but... Okay. 
police officer just kept telling us, get out, get out, get out. We need, we need okay. to leave the scene. Uh, the Walmart employees were told to rally at the Burger King. And there's like customers there like, we just paid for groceries. Can Are we allowed to go get them at some point? Like, I, that's not a good idea right now. Just leave them alone. <laughs> that is a tough timing. I'm to have to try to just get your groceries done. Okay, so serious business. We got a guy dead. Yeah. Um, we know there's another female that unfortunately passed away. Um, and I don't know all the details on that, so we'll have to, we'll have to work those out, how directly related it was. What it sounded like was cardiac arrest. Yeah. From just general shock. Yeah, from, you know, we don't know if it's from after the, um, at least I don't know at this point, whether it's from after the gunshots were fired. I'd assume the gunshots, because after that it got deathly quiet in that store. Okay. And then it was just general chaos. Got it. So Tyler, it looks like to me, and Brent may have a different take, so you you encounter the guy in the store, it sounds like you remain pretty damn calm for having a guy with a gun to the other end. Just, that's just no, your way, right right right. yeah. <laughs> so you're scouting it out, you're giving the, the details, you observe everything that happens, you wait for the police. Police mm -hmm. around the corner. The police observe, engage the suspect, tell him twice, put it down. Mm -hmm. Suspect does not immediately comply, no, and they twice. and they fire. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything more to add to it than that? They ignore the little chuckle I did right after that. Did you? Uh, do you know any of these officers? No. Okay. No, not at all. All right. And you definitely don't know the suspect. No. And you were just randomly in Walmart. You weren't there for any specific reason. We do it a lot. We just walk around. Okay. Like after we go eat, we'll walk around the store. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brian, what you got? I was taking some notes here, so you have to forgive me. I'm going to go back to the beginning. You're fine. Um, spell Tyler for me, just so I make sure I have it right. T Y L E R. Okay. And if I got this correct, if I'm wrong, let me know. R I T. C-H-I-E? Correct. Okay. Um, well, it's going to sound like a stupid question, but it's happened before. Uh, your wife, April? Mm-hmm. she go by the same last name, Richie? Yep. Okay. All right. Um, going back to where you were in the tool section, when you first, or the, the, the suspect first approached you, how close did you get to, to each other? I'd that say point? no more than five feet. No more no than more. five feet? Okay. Um, and you obviously were clear enough to see that he had a gun. Mm -hmm. And at any time, did that look like a toy gun to you or something other than an actual weapon? No. And again, I'm going back. You, you're, you were in the Marine Corps. You, you personally own mm -hmm. ARs or something similar to an AR, and to you that appeared to be an AR rifle, correct? Mm -hmm. All right. You know, whether it was something else, I have no idea. But I think you even say, again, correct me if I'm wrong, you did not see, Didn't see an orange, an orange tip, tip, which is typical of a plastic plastic toy gun, yeah. correct? Right. you got to watch that, too. There's gang members now that have uh, there's been some intel in on gang members getting orange tips painted on their weapons. Hmm. You know what I mean? You know, trying to it's trying to fake out the police. Yeah, it's a toy. Yeah. It's a toy. Yeah. Go ahead, Brown. Sorry. No, it's fine. Um, Good to know that. Going back to he 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 leaves the um, tool section, correct? Mm -hmm. He's walking down that whole last center aisle there. He he said nothing to you. Nothing to me. You nothing didn't to my engage wife. him no. or your wife, correct? No. Okay. No. Um, was he on the phone at that time still? I believe so. Okay. And again, you don't recall what he was talking about? No. Because right. I was already on the phone trying to get title one. And he moves from that location in the tool section down the aisle back to where we saw on the video. Correct. In the, in the pet pet section. Mm hmm Okay. And um, you, you said earlier he muzzled check two children, and that's, you consider the, the muzzle check is when he was waving the gun around as that first family passed by. Right. Correct? I mean, there was other people that he was, that were walking around the area. I couldn't tell if they were actually checked or not, but he, the way he's just waving around, pointing at things, okay. just kind of left me uneasy. 
All right, and I'm going to clarify something else here. Yeah. Not only did it make you uneasy, but you were on the phone. You saw a man who you thought had an AR, mm -hmm. an assault rifle, on the phone. You weren't sure of what he was doing. Is that correct? Correct. So, in your mind, he could he could just be a lone gunman, or is it possible that you thought he could not have other associates? With That's him? what I was thinking, actually. You were afraid that there were there other were people. Others. And he was on the phone for what reason? I'm trying to get them to, like, hey, I'm at my spot. Okay. If they were going to try and rob Walmart or... Basically coordinate an effort with right. Walmart. Right. I got you. Makes sense. Um, so you're, you're watching him as you're on, on the phone with 911. Um, and he's holding the gun in, in what fashion? You said he's holding the gun by what? Was it by the by stock the grip. or by the fist grip? That's what I failed to write down, so... You said trigger grip before, so the same same difference to you. Yeah, yeah, same thing. Yeah, trigger, yeah, pistol, trigger pistol. Trigger pistol. Grip. We just right, try to make sure we quote people accurately and know what your terminologies are. Yeah, that's what I missed. I'm sorry. Yeah, so I spoke earlier by uh, saying trigger grip because I never said that. But gotcha. Pistol grip. Good enough. Okay. <laughs> um, you didn't see him actually take a magazine out, but you heard from experience what you thought were clicking sounds associated with a magazine being loaded. Correct. And you even went to the point that, from your recollection, you thought it was a 30-round magazine. Correct. Well, the magazine that looks like that, that drops below, is automatically a 30 round. They come in 10 and 30. Below what again? I'm sorry. Below the... Uh, Pistol grip? No, below the uh, magwell. Oh, below the magwell. So you even know that, right? The magazine that drops lower could, have high, could be a higher capacity magazine. Correct. All right. 10 magwell stay flush with it. All right. So we're to the point where you're you're still watching what he's doing. First family passes by. He's waving the gun around. You don't think that the second family saw the gun by their reaction? No, right? not at all. I mean, even when I was on the phone in the in the store, it didn't look like they saw him. They were just kind of like just shopping. Okay, and it was clear to you that the police were on their way. I oh, just yeah. want to re reiterate again. Why did you think it was clear the police were on their way? I mean, from the time I'm on the phone, she said, "Police have been dispatched. They are on their way." They're sending a couple units out. Okay. Did you hear any audible indications that the police were coming? Um, once they got to the store, I could hear the signs coming up. Okay. Because there's just a barrage of them, but was it was it clear that there were there were police police officers coming in that direction, or there was a police presence nearby? Mm-hmm. Okay. It wasn't like a faint sign. It was a fairly no. Clear it was sign like the right outside the door. Okay. Because we're right next to the garden center. Is there any reason to believe that the suspect couldn't have heard those police sirens? No. He would have had to have heard them from I was farther away from he was. Okay. All right. So the, you said it was after you heard the sirens, and again, quote, tell me if I'm wrong, it was roughly 45 seconds, then you saw the police enter, enter the store, enter that particular area of the store. From the time that I heard sirens, it was about 45 seconds until he was down. Okay. About 45 seconds until he was down. Okay. Right. Thank you for correcting me. And um, you heard it, and I, I believe Dave asked you this. You heard him say, put it down, put it down. There wasn't a response, and two to three seconds later, pop, pop, indicating that two, two rounds were fired. Correct. And you were certain from your observations that it was an officer in a white shirt. Correct. Fired the shots based upon the fact that you saw a muzzle flash, white smoke, and I believe you even said two. a couple of shell two casings. Okay. All right. here with the floor. And at, and at that point, you could hear the shell casings at the floor? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, and then at that point, um, you could no longer see the suspect, is no. that correct? So you didn't, I didn't even see him get back up. Like you I didn't said. know he got back up. No, no. You didn't know he approached um, the officers and or what may be considered him approaching that gun again? Correct. Okay. And from when the officer said that he's running, that's when I got up. Like I was telling the uh, dispatch that he's running, he's running. Just trying to keep them informed as well. I understand that. So, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure I'm clear on this. I believe it was asked, and I'll ask you again. Um, at any time other than this suspect on the phone, did you hear him engage anybody else or say anything to the police officers? No. Okay. Nothing was said. From from him. I don't know. I wasn't close enough. But okay. as far as my understanding, no. All right. If you recall. After the commands were given, put it down, put it down, did you hear the suspect say anything? 
nothing. He just kind of like turned, and then the two shots were fired. Okay. And at that point, the obvious sounds, you know, screaming in vain. I understand that. But. And then shortly thereafter, you're you're told to quickly leave the area by yeah. a couple other officers. Oh, yeah. You went outside, watched what was going on from your car as and long as long as you could. Right, and they were told to move again because my car was parked right next to the uh, one of the SUVs, the officer SUVs. Okay. And um, at any time while you were there, did you see this? What we've come to learn as a second individual who had to be taken away via ambulance. Did you ever see that person collapse? I did not. I didn't even know until I got home probably about a half hour later that she had passed. Okay. Did you see it on the news or you get a call from a friend or how did you, how did you, were, how were you made aware of that? Um, my wife's mother posted on Facebook that it was a lady that passed as well. Oh, okay. And then we hear on the news probably 11 o'clock news, I want to say, because it was after the original broadcast, because they weren't sure of any statuses yet, Okay. that she had definitely passed. You bring up an interesting point that I want to ask you about. Did any time after this incident, you or your wife put any postings on Facebook about what transpired? I think so. You did? Yeah. Okay, can you briefly go into any discussion about what she wrote or what she posted? If my phone doesn't die first. Well, that's okay. Yeah, we apologize. You've been here a long time. We, we appreciate your cooperation. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's one here from mother-in-law going through a prayer over it. And, okay. Um, wife says, I'm still trying to process all this. Seeing someone get shot is horrible. Yeah. And it's at the Beaver Creek Walmart. And she says, right here, yeah, the guy walks past us with a gun as my mom was calling me. And Tyler watched him as he walked to the pets, proceeded to load the gun, kept waving it around while he was on the phone with someone. So Tyler called the cops, and within five minutes, they were there. Told him to put the gun down. He pointed at them, and they shot him. The poor lady next to aisle over had a heart attack and died from the shock. Okay. That was hmm. later on. And again, she's saying here the guy had the gun, died along with another woman. And then today I posted that I'm here talking to you guys. Okay. And this is, just is this on your Facebook page or is this on your? Wife's it's on mine, my wife's, her mom's, there's a whole bunch of people. And the uh, news story that's actually posted on here as well, and I can't okay. find it. Like the length of video to the... Yeah, okay. from the actual news. Um, there's been a couple comments in there as well, just the same thing. Okay. All right, have you been contacted by the media as a result of... No, this morning, I uh, just knocked on the door, the two officers are there. Okay. I'm like, I already know why you guys are here. Yep. All right. And then that's when you agreed to come here and yeah. speak with us. Yeah, yeah. All I've right. got nothing to hide. Well, we appreciate your honesty. Um, we've asked a lot of questions. Um, obviously, there's a lot that's transpired in the past couple of days. Do you have any any uh, information for us that we may have forgot to ask you, you think is important, anything we left out? Mm, not that I'm aware of. That'll do it. Um, I give you a business card. You call me if you anything comes up. And uh, other than that, you know we don't immediately see the need to contact you again. But uh, we may be calling for something else. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and and unlike what Beaver Creek did, and you have to understand this is an extraordinary circumstance for them. They obviously wanted to speak to you and get your statement, which they called us to talk to you today. Um, if, if we need something from you, we'll, we'll call you and try to make it the plans of convenience. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't, don't, think any, don't think poorly of Beaver Creek Police Department because they got you out of bed or made you miss work. It's just an oh, extraordinary I circumstance. I it's just one of those things that I, I hope for your sake this never happens to you again in your life, and it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing that you never have to deal with again. So. We'll let you get out of here. All right. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. I appreciate it. You need anything? Before we get out? No. All right.
you want, you can't give me a grab. I think you go out this way. Yeah, I went this way to the first door. Why? Yeah, and that'll I mean all my patients. I mean they are. All I was told is she was going to stay. Conversation over because it's going nowhere. I knew more before I sat down. 